Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you are watching Phalanx Miniatures. And today I will be showing you my method to paint really fancy looking blue armor on Ultramarine's hero characters. This will be a more like intermediate level video, but if you are interested in how to paint your troops, I also created a really cool method for that that you can check out here. In this video, I would like to show you the method I use for models that I really want to stand out from my regular troops or if I want to paint something for my display case. I have tried a lot of different methods to paint my Ultramarine heroes and this is the one I found the best so far. And since Ultramarines are objectively the best, I'm sure you want to paint them too. Step 1. Base coating. The goal here is to achieve a relatively even coverage with our first base coat color. Ideally we leave the shadow areas darker and have the upper areas that are supposed to be highlighted later fully covered. To achieve this I start from a zenithal highlight meaning that I prime the model black and then sprayed it white from above. You can do it with an airbrush like I did or by using a black and white rattle can one after the other as well. The light undercoat helps me achieve a coverage with my midtone much easier on the upper areas but by not covering the shadows fully and letting the black show through I can leave the shadows darker. The trick is to use watered down paint and apply multiple layers after letting the previous one dry first. After every layer I can see how much of the white and black still shows through and decide if I need to apply another layer on top. Something to note here is that I don't premix the paint on my wet palette. Instead I dip my brush into the water every time before I load it with paint and leave enough water in the brush to get the consistency I need. I simply wick off some of the water on a paper towel and leave just enough for mixing with the paint. This might sound difficult but in my experience it becomes second nature super fast. I found that if I premix the water and the paint on the palette the water evaporates over time and the consistency changes making my life more difficult. Also this makes it easier for me to manipulate the paints to get the right consistency since it is easier to add water than to remove it. Your mileage might vary though, simply use whatever works for you. Step 2. Shadows. Now that we have established our base color it is time to go darker. And since our mid-tone is blue I will use a red as the shadow color. Red in general works really well with blue one way or the other so you can use blue as a great shadow color for red as well. If you would like to make this easier you can simply go for black shadows. You can achieve a nice contrast that way as well but the end result will be much less striking and visually interesting in my opinion. Similarly to the previous step I am using water down paint and apply it in multiple layers until I reach the opacity that I need. In order to know where I should put my shadows I am mostly using the dark areas that I created with the zenithal highlight and left visible in the first step. In most places I am not covering the darker areas fully and leave some of the black and the dark blue visible to create a transition. Even without any highlights the end result is already quite cool since there is already some contrast between the shadows and the original blue and some nice visual interest created between the blue and the red. Step 3. Highlights. In the previous step we created shadows, now let's move on to the lights. There is no tricks with colors here, I simply apply progressively lighter and lighter blues. I'm using Vallejo paints on this model because I quite like the way they look, but you can replace them with any blue paints in your arsenal, for example McCrack blue, Calgar blue and Fenrisian grey would be perfect as well. The process is quite easy once you get the hang of it. I mostly just use the lighter areas that I created earlier with the zenithal highlights and cover a progressively smaller and smaller area with the lighter colors, making sure that I leave some of the previous color visible so I create a transition between the two. If I want to smooth out the transition, I can take an even more watered down version of the previous paint and paint it from the lighter area towards the darker one in multiple passes until I am satisfied with the result. With every new highlight color I also apply edge highlights everywhere. This is super important to sell the effect we are going for and to make the model readable for the viewer. Ideally every edge should be highlighted as thinly as you can manage. It is not a zero sum game though, the better you get at the edge highlights the better the end results will be. But any edge highlights you do will make things better so you just do your best and keep improving. With the lightest highlight colors it is enough to concentrate on the upward facing edges, you don't need to go for every single one of them. Depending on how shiny you want the armor to be and how much contrast you want, you can go as far as pure white with your highlights and cover more or less area with them. Step 4. Recess shading and black lining. Since we are not applying a shade in this paint job because we don't want to ruin the transitions and colors we created with our shadows and highlights, we have to find another way to make sure our recesses are dark. If we don't do this, the model will lack definition no matter how much time we put in with our edge highlights. You can resort to various tricks to achieve this, oil paints, dedicated recess shading products or inks for example, but the most effective way I found is to simply water down some black paint quite heavily and then apply it in the recesses with a nice thin brush. This might seem daunting at first but with a bit of practice and the right paint consistency it is actually quite easy and super satisfying to do. 
it always surprises me how much it adds to the overall look of the model as I get closer to finishing this step. Make sure to hit every recess, but also apply the black wherever two surfaces meet, as well as around all the raised corners and edges. If you make a mistake, you can quickly wipe it away with your finger or a damp brush. If you were too slow and didn't manage to wipe it away, simply treat it as a happy accident and create battle damage out of it. And with that, our blue armor is finished and here's how the model looks with everything painted. In this video I didn't go over the rest of the model, if you are interested in how I do the non-metallic metal parts you can check out my previous video linked in the corner where I go into the details. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something useful, if you did give it a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so you get notified when the next one comes out. See you guys soon in the next video.